right, here we go, folks, for game number seven of this best of nine, a team arena challenge. We have Mouse Thorzain here in the top right-hand corner. He is our red Terran player, his opponent here on Taldor and Malter. Our purple Terran in the top left-hand corner, that is Millennium Dystar. So, TVT action, and uh, we're going to see if Dystar can start to bring this back now for Millennium. Now, Dystar, like I was mentioning, we haven't seen him for a while. Right. Um, him and Koss were dominating the scene for a while, especially when everything was online. We just took a look at the uh, the results, and that period of about March through April, into July even, is when European Terrans were just dominating the field. As you can see, he was winning tournaments going up against, you know, Tarson and Koss in the finals show. So. Stefano, yeah. Ciara... He went up against Koss twice in that period as well. Yeah, yeah, pretty quick there. So, so Dice Star, he has uh, got to take his game now to Thorzane, who is an incredible multifaceted player. The nice part about Thorzane is that he doesn't, he has weaker matchups, but overall, like some players have critically weaker matchups. Like you can easily send in a Protoss player to snipe X player, but yet you wouldn't even think of sending a Zerg or a Terran against him because they would just stomp him, you know? Yeah. Thorzane. You don't really have a great... I, I agree that Terran is the way to go right here of any I, of the matchups, I, I feel that but, TVT is probably his weakest, right. which is weird because his play style just seems but so TVT. That's that's the point I'm making, is because he's actually really good at TVT. Is yeah. it worse than his versus Zerga versus Protoss? Maybe, so. so. but... It's not so worse that you would say, oh, Thorzane's at a disadvantage now because he's playing a Terran player. He's think, just so solid. I think the reasoning is in TVT is just there's such huge swings. If you if you screw up your positioning once, the entire game can shift so drastically. Thorzane is well suited to knocking out something like Mutilus Harassment because of the um, because of the way he likes to use Thors. He always has a lot of static defense and stuff like that. A lot harder to pull off against drop play, you know? Yeah. Anytime he gets Marine dropped or something like that, it's forced to pull a very immobile unit composition out of the way and come back and try and save himself against it. So... Taking a look at the match now, Thorzane decided to go one Rax Gasless FE. He's already got Marines up at the front. His opponent, on the other hand, opting for a Tech Lab, first of all. Looks like we're going to see some Reapers here. Is this the version where Reapers can actually sneak in through the back? No. No, it is not. Nonetheless, so. we will see a Reaper out of Die Star. Now, the question is, how many is he going to get? We've seen players do two Reaper. We've seen yeah. players do three Reapers. Uh, it's a huge investment if you decide to go with three Reapers. Definitely. Um, I They're 50-50, so it's 300 resources. So. so much early game gas as well. You're delaying any kind of tech that you're going to be doing. Yeah, very Factory, true. your starport, it's all going to come much later. Stim going to come much later. Um, are we going to see that second Reaper? It looks... He is expanding at the same time now. We'll find like, out, though. No, he's actually going to build a Marine. I like that. Okay, so he'll be able to move into a uh, factory here pretty quick. We'll see if that comes up in just a second. He does have the requisite gas for that. Thorsane already putting up barracks number two. This and barracks number three. Now, I when barracks number two was started, I was going to say this is a build I've seen out of Thorsane quite a bit, where he goes two racks, and it offers him the flexibility to hit some sort of a upgraded bio timing or just move right into... Um, you know, some sort of siege tank play after that because of the way he's already bringing in gas. But the third Rax immediately is something that I've not seen out of him a lot recently. Yeah. Now, here comes that uh, Reaper Scout. It does have one kill, so he will be able to maintain control over the Zelnaga uh, for a short time, but he doesn't know exactly what Thorzane's up to. Did he see the command center there? I'm not sure if he even got a look at that. No, no he but he knew that it was up because of the way these Marines were positioned, or so I would assume. But, of course, he doesn't have the exact timing exactly. of how far along it is. And also, you can just have your Marines out there anyway. It's just a good Very position true. to stop scouting. And Very true. You, you might not necessarily be blocking for an expansion. We already have a uh, tech lab and a starport coming up here for Die Star. So banshees it looks like he's going to sure. move into some Banshees. You are absolutely correct. And Thorsane is really just going to have to rely on Marines and scans for the time being. Unless we see an emergency engineering bay thrown up or something like that. Yeah, Thorzane's just going very heavy macro, a lot of Marines, combat shield on the way as well. So he's going to have combat shield to deal with these Banshees. Um, he's going to have his two orbitals. No NG Bay just yet. Hopefully he gets one pretty soon. Scan does go off there from Dystar seeing the uh, the Raxes and the add-ons. So wow. Dystar kind of knows what he's up to. But yeah, Thorzane has absolutely no idea what Dystar's up to. Yeah, he saw from the direction of the Reaper where his opponent was at, but he doesn't know anything about what's going on. 
It doesn't seem like he cares too much either. And do we have Cloak? We do have Cloak coming up on this Banshee as well. And there is an Engineering Bay coming up for Thorzane right now. He uh, has that coming up at the back of his base. And that Cloak takes so long to finish that this Engineering Bay is going to be able to come up. And he will be able to establish turrets as long as that's his intention. If he waits and just puts up an upgrade, that uh, Banshee still could do a lot of damage. And it's such a delayed Cloak as well. I mean... It's uh, expand into cloak. And there's the combat shield timing. It just finishes up, but he runs into a bunker. I don't care if you have combat shields or not. You're not assaulting that bunker. No, there's no way. He might be able to sneak in around the south of the bunker and try and get in behind the mineral line, but I don't think that. I think that would be ill advised. I agree. Here comes the first banshee. Cloak is not quite done. Thorzane has most of his marines out on the map right now. He does have two marines in position waiting for that reaper. Though. Nice. Okay, so he'll kill the reaper in just a second, but. Here it is. The Banshee's making its way in. Oh, and Thorzane's Marines are just way out of position right now. Oh, boy. This could actually do a considerable amount of damage. Thorzane, very fast reaction time, though. Pulling back with a couple of his Marines, and it looks like, yes, he is going to assault the front at the same time. Oof. But there are two bunkers up now, and that makes that a much dicier proposition. Yeah, it certainly does. Trying to get a turret up here. He does have a couple Marines in the main. Cloak goes off. It does pick off the SCV, making the turret. He does sneak around the bottom of the bunker, like I said. There you go. Sneaks into the mineral line. Line and is going to be able to deny that. So that's actually huge for Thorzane right there. He just mitigated a lot of the damage that the uh, Banshee just did to him. Now that Banshee has been no slouch. 12 kills, but there is the turret finally. So the Marines are going to be able to fire on the Banshee and that will eventually get cleared up. But Thorzane, until any sort of units are able to come and uh, assault these directly, is denying just as much economy as his opponent at the moment. Yeah, and he's staying up on supply. Oh, oh god. my god. 16, 17 kills, and that just continues to go up. It's got to back away now oh my god that banshee oh get away get away all right oh my goodness all right so we have we still have a supply advantage for thorzane because thorzane didn't invest in as much tech oh wow five kill banshee down at the bottom as well um he didn't invest in as much tech was just going for those straight macro um marines like you were talking about and getting his infrastructure up and now thorzane picks off one of the banshees nice little win for him siege mode is not even close to done and dysar has just lost so much mining time off of these scvs oh he's going in with two cloaked banshees to take out the remainder of this mar these marines does he have a scan he might be able to pick off another one that banshee actually loses energy how many hit points does it have left and not oh. too many 25 a couple so. scvs are going to go down here as well yeah, but uh, Dysart did do a good job of cleaning this up. However, Thorzane, like I said, is still up in supply overall. And because of that lost mining time, they've really drawn themselves even. They're yeah. even on workers. Their economy is about the same. Their tech is pretty close. Thorzane is behind... Um, you know, he's not moved into any siege tanks, I guess I should say. The tech lab's just now coming up. This is actually a strangely even game. But, I mean, you do definitely want that heavy marine count he can he can kind of force his way on the map now it's going to be a while before die star can really move out i mean he just has so many marines he can kind of float around the zelnaga wait for die star to try and make a move even though his tanks are coming later oh and he might intercept this banshee it's oh, going to be, that so, would be close. so bad if die star is taking his attention off and he's worried about these units down at the bottom oh, there it is there's, there's the, scan. the scan but the banshee gets away 19 kill banshee oh he's going to get it anyway Oh my god, he let it get killed by that last Marine. I actually wow. can't believe that happened. Because these uh, Marines do have plus one. Mm -hmm. He got that last seven hit points. May wow. have been a calculated error there and by Dystar. And here Dye comes a double drop from Thorzane into the main. Does Dystar have enough Marines at the front door to deal with this? And do they have stim? I don't think so. No, he only has eight Marines sitting there. It's mostly just siege tanks that he's going to have to send oh, back. Oh, and those two tanks... Oh, and he denies Stim, it looks like, yes, by picking did. off yes, the did. tech lab. That, that was just about to finish oh, up, God. and he's going to be able to move in and kill so through the mineral SCVs. line. Oh, my God. Workers are continuing to go down. Thorzian has actually killed more workers than Dysar has, and Dysar had a 19-kill Banshee there Picks for a while. off the double depot. Oh, very nice job, and that does temporarily supply block Dysar. He clears that up, but once again, Thorzian being so efficient with his units. And being so aggressive. Yes. Uncharacteristic. Yeah, he's Thorzane. being very aggressive this game, but it's, it's worked really out. really paying out for him. Maybe, maybe uh, metagaming his opponent just a little bit. We do have a command center coming down as well. He'll be able to move into um, three base production in just a second, and he is starting to inflate his own tank count. And you know, oh, the second drop at the main two. Die Star just pulled everything out. There's no turrets. He can just drop those marines directly yeah, yeah. into the mineral line. And There's no stim for him to react either. 
And Die Star, you know, a huge siege tank count is awesome. But if you literally have no Marines to support it at all, it doesn't mean much. As Thorazine will be able to drop right on top of those and neutralize their numbers very quickly. And here it comes once again. More supply depots are going to fall. And Die Star is already supply blocked as it is. This is just going to cause more and more damage. Needs to pick up. There he goes. Oh dear, the medevac's actually flying right over the marines there. Oh, that's no good. But, oh, don't forget, Stim's not done, so we can't actually oh, catch is it up to fly the second one. Natural? Oh god, don't fly back there, there we go. Oh, if Dystar would have kept walking, his units may have been able to catch that medevac. As it stands, Thorazine is starting to siege up underneath that sweet spot. Is good to watch out, as those siege tanks are going to rip his marines apart. Yeah, they are. And uh, tries to get this siege tank in the mineral line, but is not going to be able to do so. He does have a siege tank on the low ground, though, that's... Um, certainly paying for itself. Star trying to get a tank into position. That's actually going to get picked off uh, by these tanks on the low ground. If he loses that Viking, though, he'll lose the side of the high ground. Preemptive scan goes off for yeah, Thorazine. Nice to make sure he picks off that last uh, siege tank sitting there. Thorazine is up by 50 supply, though, and the mining at this second base is about to go down for Star. Another scan hits, and the siege tank bites the dust. Uh, but taking a look, Thorazine, he's on a third base with the Planetary Fortress sitting in there. He's well defended against any sort of subsequent drops. He is going to lose a siege tank here in just a second. Bye-bye, siege tank. Uh, getting out of the way. No, don't go in front of this. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Keeps actually, it alive. Anti-timing there. But uh, Thorazine dropping once again into the main, picking off yet more SCVs. And just denying the stim, stim from is still not yeah. done. That's really what's just causing so many problems here for Dystar. He doesn't have stim, so he can't really react to any of these drops super fast. Yeah, you're exactly right. He can't right. just stim a pack of marines and get in there and clean it up and also there at the natural, just picking off the gas and taking out oh those tanks. Oh my god. And, and he's moving out at the same drop. time, directly into Thorzane's army, which might have been a mistake as well. Yeah, definitely. Looks like Dystar is going to be able to get some good kills with these sea shanks that are up here at the front, but there's just not enough stuff and Thorzane's going to be able to brute force his way through, has continued to do damage inside of the main as well, stopping reinforcements from making their way up and there's nothing preventing Thorzane from making his way right up the ramp. Yeah, Thorzane just playing brilliantly right now. He's picking Dystar to pieces. Yeah. Sieging up in the front here. Going to be able to take out a few tanks. Oh, Both God. of them go down immediately, and now the command center is under fire from all angles. This is no good at all. More and mules he's just control firing down. the command center. Yeah, he is. He'll he'll start to switch his attention to a few SCVs here in just a second, but he's already denied so much mining time. Still up by 50 supply, reinforcing with medevacs at the same time. Dystar GG's, and Mouse has taken the series Five to two, they advance to play Slayers in winners round two. Congratulations to Mouse. Very, very, very well done.